Hi, I am Dr. Katie Novak and I am here to talk about the importance of every school and district building a multi-tiered system of support. Now let's zoom back a little bit to 2012 to try to answer the question, why is it so important for us to build a multi-tiered system of support? And to do that, we need to start with the race to the top. So the race to the top initiative in 2012 brought three key education changes that we're all probably very familiar with today. The first was the Common Core standards, which really focused on getting all students college and career ready. The second was that all districts needed to move away from a response to intervention or an RTI system, which was very reactive and focused more on building a multi-tiered system of support or MTSS, which is far more proactive in addressing the barriers that may affect all students from being able to learn. And the third, which was a real overhaul of educator evaluation, which focused on four key domains, you know, curriculum and instruction and building lessons for all students. The second domain was actually teaching all students, which really got us to look at the importance of inclusion. And then, of course, collaborating with families and communities and our professional responsibilities, which was a renewed sense of professional development. So starting in 2012, we had this real focus on how do we design standards-based lessons to allow all students to really be college and career ready or future ready while eliminating the barriers in a system that prevent all students from being really successful. And to do that, we really need to transform the way that we're designing teaching and learning which required a definite, definite investment in professional development as we were moving away from a one-size-fits-all model of teaching and learning to one that was based more on the principles of universal design for learning. So in 2012, the state of Massachusetts had their first MTSS blueprint, which started looking at all the systematic factors that are absolutely necessary to ensure that all students can learn. So let's really unpack MTSS and how it's different from RTI because it builds on this concept of how do we provide intervention when students are not learning. Now RTI or responsive intervention actually started as an alternative evaluation procedure for special education and it was very focused on students had dis disabilities or students had learning disabilities and we want to move away from that and realize that schools and districts actually have disabilities which may prevent all students from learning. Now, of course, we recognize that students sometimes face barriers that make learning difficult. These barriers may be academic, they may be behavioral, or they may be social-emotional. But the reality is there's significant research and evidence that says that when systems are designed to meet the needs of all learners, student achievement is very alterable. All students can grow despite barriers, and all students can be college and career ready if we create a system that allows for their success and prevents failure. And to do this, we really need to work on eliminating the barriers that prevent some schools and districts from building these robust systems. So in RTI, the idea was that all students receive really rich tier one inclusive instruction in the least restrictive environment available to them. And this concept that all students were tier one students first in some ways got a little cloudy because even though the federal legislation said that all students must receive tier one and then be supplemented with targeted or intensive support if necessary, the reality is, is that some districts actually supplanted tier one instruction, meaning that students became tier two students or tier three students. And they received that small group instruction instead of tier one. Now the original RTI actually showed us that it was all some and few and MTSS still stands on that belief that all students are tier one students first. Again going back to race to the top all students deserve access to grade level standards which will allow them to be college and career ready either through really really rich standards based instruction or through those access and entry points. The next is is that you need a culture of data, whereas some students are going to suggest through universal screening measures or diagnostic assessments that those students need more. And they 
absolutely deserve more. That's one of the underlying principles of equity. But to do that, a system has to be ready to give students more. And if you ask educators, you know, why can't your students get tier one and tier two support? You start hearing barriers like, well, we don't have a schedule for that. We don't have the staffing or the resources or the curriculum to support students in that way. Maybe teachers don't have the professional development in order to meet the needs of all students in inclusive classrooms, or there's no environment of data or there's no shared responsibility or decision making among a school of stakeholders. And so those are the barriers that are eliminated through a multi-tiered system. And so what you'll learn about through this video series is that actually our systems can be disabling to students. And when we think about implementation science or what drivers and resources we have to have in place so that all students can receive really rich tier one instruction and the least restrictive environment available to them, and then tier two and tier three support if necessary, academically, behaviorally, and social emotionally, we need to look towards a multi-tiered system of support. So why is this so critical? All students deserve to be as successful as they can possibly be, and they deserve to do that with diverse peers. We believe in equity and inclusion. We believe in dismantling the systems that prevented students from learning together because environments were restrictive, and we believe that we can intervene in addition to having a really first best instruction to allow all students to make the most growth possible. And we do that here in Massachusetts as well as throughout the nation through building a multi-tiered system of support which is very evidence-based. Now one last note about why evidence-based is such a powerful statement is previous to the Every Student Succeeds Act or ESSA which was adopted in December of 2015 we focused on No Child Left Behind, which was focused on research-based. Now, how is research-based different from evidence-based? So for example, Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, has 30 years of research behind it. There are peer-reviewed studies dating back for three decades on neuroscience and how UDL really allows more students to access and engage with rigorous curriculum. Now, I could take that research base and create a product and sell it to you and say, this is a great product, it's research based it's going to meet the needs of all of your students. The reality is, is I have no evidence that my research-based program is actually effective. To do that, I have to make sure that I have peer-reviewed research studies that are gold standard and have a treatment group and a control group and actually show a strong evidence base for the practice. And so this allows you to know that it works. And what we know about districts and schools who build multi-tiered systems, it works. And when these systems are built using programs and staffing procedures and and professional development that is also evidence-based, we know that we can eliminate and alter some of the barriers that prevent all students from learning. And so take this journey, share in the responsibility for creating a system that allows all educators and students to be effective academically, behaviorally, and social emotionally by building the system from the outside in, and we will truly be nation's best across the board.